Hi there, everyone. Uh, I, I'm really excited to kind of uh, do this little video. It's, it's focusing on an introduction to Google Expeditions for iOS. What I love about Expeditions and, and, and the Google tools in general uh, it, is we're making things cross-platform. So no matter what device I pick up, I can utilize these really great tools. And one of these tools that I want to talk about today is the Expeditions app. Our district was very fortunate to organize uh, one of the pioneer programs to visit our site. And throughout the school day, we worked with uh, fifth and sixth grade classrooms to take a tour of units they were studying. So we looked at ocean acidification. Uh, we took a tour to Greece. Uh, for our French class, we were able to go uh, to locations in France and, and talk about the culture and observe what we saw. And when we did this, we had the opportunity to use the Google Cardboard device along with uh, phones to make those devices 3D. And one challenge that came up when we were thinking about this afterwards was, what do we actually do for our student devices if we wanted to take advantage of this program? And we were in a holding pattern as we were waiting for expeditions to come out for iOS, uh, which worked out perfect because for us, we have 7th and 8th grade students with a one-to-one -one iPad. Uh, teachers of those classes, they have a device as well. So suddenly we saw, uh, and we see we have the potential to go ahead and use this as a really great educational tool to take field trips to locations that we just normally can't reach. Uh, and as our units change, obviously, within our class, we have that ability to pick up content that uh, is relevant for what we are covering. Uh, so what I have here is I have two different devices. I have a phone, uh, which is on the right-hand side here, and this is acting as the guide. Uh, this actually works out fairly well with the dimension difference to make it a little easier uh, to differentiate. Uh, and the iPad over here on the left is going to serve as an explorer. So what you'll see first off is when you open the app, uh, you have to choose an option. Are you going to guide or explore? If you're wondering how you change this, up on the top where we say guide, we can tap on that. And here's where we receive our choices. Do we want to be a guide and lead the lesson, which typically will be a teacher-driven activity. Uh, however, this really has a cool potential for students to take ownership uh, and agency of their learning, uh, take a trip, and guide the class through what they see. Uh, we'll see how we can work with this a little bit later and augment some of the information that's provided automatically uh, to really make this student-generated and a student-led trip on a unit of study that they might be doing uh, in an inquiry or uh, almost an independent study style project. Uh, we also have the ability to be an explorer, where we're going to follow the expedition. So I'm going to switch this device over here to be, uh, in this example, uh, the iPad over here on the left is the explorer. The iPhone over here on the right is going to be the guide. And one thing I want to mention here is there's a great uh, Connect Explorers utility that's going to show us uh, the ability just to test out our network connection and show the steps to make sure everything is working correctly. Uh, one thing I did notice is when we tried this initially on our wireless network in our school district, we block peer-to-peer -peer connectivity. Uh, we don't necessarily want our students to be uh, dropping content back and forth to their own devices. Uh, so we found that this information uh, needs some adjustment on our side, which is going to mean if you're working and looking to implement this in your school district, Make sure you're spending the time to work with your IT staff as well. Uh, so these troubleshooting steps are great. I'm going to close this because we can see from this that uh, my Explorer sees my lesson. In my case here, I did pick one already downloaded, the National Parks, uh, partially uh, the Centennial Anniversary. This is a great way uh, to not only explore our parks, but uh, to see what's out there. And such an amazing way to do it without having to travel to uh, Montana or Wyoming or California. We're going to uh, open up this lesson here on my teaching side. And on the student side, we see that there's already uh, an Explorer lesson going on, and I have the ability to join this. Now, right now, I only have two devices here, but uh, if there were to be a third one uh, of another lesson, you could potentially have an additional uh, exploration you could join. I'm going to go ahead and join this and we'll see on the student device right now it says waiting for teacher. 
That's because if we look on our teaching device over here on the right hand side, we're going to see I haven't yet started. I haven't clicked the play button. Uh, what's great about this is once I start it and the student gets that view, I have the ability to pause it again. You see pause by teacher as a nice way to grab student attention. What's great about these conversation items is uh, I'm going to go here, resume the tour. Uh, we see a little placard that gives us some information about, uh, in this case, Mount Rushmore. Now, picking up the student device, uh, I can slide this card down, and what we'll see is, on the student device, on the left-hand side, uh, we'll see where we're looking. I'm going to see if I can tilt this correctly, but you'll see the little face, which is actually providing the location uh, of the student device where I'm looking. You'll see the image change based upon how I pan and move the device, so it's using the built-in accelerometers and additional pieces of information. As the teacher, I can slide my screen around, see where the students are, and I'll be able to see here we're looking at Mount Rushmore. I have a lesson here with some information. And through here, uh, which is also really great, is I get some guiding questions, uh, beginner questions. We'll see uh, an answer is well provided. I'm going to place the student device down just so I can uh, show you some of the other pieces. We have an intermediate question, and then we can go to advanced. So these serve as really great guiding questions for visiting this location. Now, talking back to the student-created expedition, where you might have a student pick a location, they can generate their own questions. So we'll see now, I'm going to slide, uh, instead of Mount Rushmore, I'm going to pause. I'm going to move to the next spot, Yosemite National Park, click play, and we'll see the information pop up again. You can slide the uh, card down again to kind of, and now as a teacher, uh, I'm going to switch uh, to Yosemite. I'm going to guide the location downward, and then we're going to go look at this location right here. Just by pressing and holding on my teacher screen, now my student device has an arrow. And you'll see as I move my device, the arrow of where I want to look changes to point out the location. So now I can talk about the specific peak location. If you wanted to view uh, that same information from a different part, from the top of Yosemite, you can do the same thing. Press and hold. We'll now see that my student device, once it gets in that area, has the information handy. I really think this is a cool way that, that we have an ability to go ahead and uh, view these locations. And what I love about it is the fact that we can use the built-in technology on the device. So the investment that you've made with, say, 100 iPads, with 1,000 iPads, doesn't need to have an extra piece of uh, hardware associated with it. Now, keep in mind, to really get that fully engaging experience, you might want to look at uh, some handheld devices, maybe some old phones you can have donated that work with the cardboard headset. Uh, but this is a great way to have the Expeditions tool uh, available to any teacher that would like to use it. I'm going to exit this Expedition, and it's going to ask, do we really want to do that? Of course, what happens once you do it? Well, the device that was in the teaching, uh, excuse me, the Explorer mode, now says waiting for teacher. I can go back uh, and pick another area. So we're going to go to a historical building in the UK. We'll see this is going to take a minute or so to download the content. Once it's ready, we can tap on it, press play, and the students that were previously in the last expedition I had are back where we left off. I'm going to leave the expedition again. On the student device, I'm going to go ahead and exit out. And we see just how easy and simple this is. Uh, I, I think it's really great, and I'm excited to see what we can do. I, I'd also love to hear about ways that you can see using this tool. Uh, so the comment section below the video, feel free to throw out some ideas. I hope this was entertaining. I hope it uh, gets some ideas going and might make you feel more comfortable with using this kind of a tool in your classroom. Thanks for tuning in.